A couple months back, I went to see a very popular prefab home in person, but after posting the video, it was brought to my attention over and over again that I missed a critical part of the tour. So, gotta make things right. In an attempt to right my wrong, I made my way back to the Grand Canyon State in hopes of not only delivering on what I missed, but adding in a little something something extra to make it worth your time. For those wondering, the video I'm referring to was a tour of the 320 square foot Zenny Home Denison. If you happen to miss that video, this is the 320 square foot Denison model from Zenny Home. And when I went through it the first time, I didn't point out where the washer dryer were, I didn't show the storage, and people were upset about it. So let's check it out. Right here, we have got the stacking washer dryer right there, as well as hot water on demand up there. And then if we go to this side, we've got the fridge up top, down below the freezer. I don't even know what this is up here. That's just storage right there, all right? And then of course, I also miss showing the closet. So let's open it up. I'm gonna go inside and show you what they got going on here. For everyone that was up in the comments of the last video looking to see this space, here you go. So let's see what they got going on. They got a place to hang coats here, and then they've got another one there, but it's a little bit higher. So this would be a good place to hang your capri pants. Um, it's about perfect height for that. If those come back into style, we're gonna be ready right there. And then here, You've got one, two, three, four racks, three racks plus a shelf for shoes on the bottom. And then here we've got one, two, three, four shelves plus the bottom, making it five. There, for anyone who commented, there's the inside of the closet. We saw where the washer dryer is and I can rest easy knowing I've made things right. Now, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that this isn't enough for an entire video. So I was thinking maybe we go up to the factory and find out how these are built. Let's do it. The Zenny Home Factory is a quick four hour drive north of Phoenix and tell you what, it is a scenic tour through the desert. If you go, I would suggest making time to check out the canyons. Thank me later. The factory is located a few minutes outside Page, Arizona in a space that's about 40,000 square feet. I've been able to tour a few factories now and something that stands out about Zenny Home is their focus on becoming more efficient to be able to build more homes. They have two standardized models, the 320 square foot Denison or the 640 square foot Citizen. You take one or you take the other. They're keeping it simple. I was linked up with one of their engineers, Rosendo Lopez for the tour, and he went deep into their build process. It's very fascinating. Before I get into that, I made a few important diagrams so everyone knows how this factory operates and will understand what he's showing us. If you've watched any factory tour videos on the channel, you already know there are a few different ways they can be set up. I've toured assembly line factories, I've toured factories where they build in place, but this is the first time I've toured a factory like this. What they're doing is assembling parts of the home in one section of the factory, sub-assemblies if you will, then moving them to the middle of the factory where they're assembling the homes in a static location. So one side station or sub-assembly will build the same wall over and over and over again, then they're moved and assembled in the middle of the factory. They refer to the stations as wall companies and line companies, and apparently by making the switch to this style of build, they've increased production by 10x. So, yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm Rosenda Lopez, I'm the VP of Engineering here at Zenny Home. Uh, my job is to ensure the factory is efficient, um, solve the bottlenecks, uh, figure out all, all the issues we're having, and streamline all of our processes. Here we have our frame CAD. Um, this is the TF550. Okay. Um, when we first started here, uh, one issue that we had was getting steel studs. Yeah. Um, they were pretty heavy in demand. Um, sometimes we would have to wait several weeks just to get our supply here. Okay. So the management team here decided hey let's just make our own studs we can buy recycled steel yeah. and we can have this machine roll our studs with every option that we want based on our plan set so the cool thing about this is we can have the studs come out and we can put web notches in in areas where we have electrical or plumbing and it eliminates the step of doing it manually it. Um, on the sub assembly all of our studs that we use are 16 gauge Okay. Um, they have a G90 galvanization coating for 50 to 100 years of anti-rust prevention. Um, 16 gauge, people might say it's a little overkill, yeah. um, but we use it here uh, just to compensate our universal box aspect. So, I think Bob was saying that 
the same you have the same frame for the the single story as you do the five story is that correct right? you still yeah. doing that yes we do so our chassis we have one chassis design for whether it's a single family adu or it's okay. a stacked unit nice. same with our steel framing for our walls it's the same whether it's an adu or multifamily. we use 16 gauge all the way around there's just some small differences that we change when we're stacking it yeah which right. is kind of just like an accessory to that to Makes that framing sense. yeah but the, the infrastructure is the same so before you know when we were prototyping here and building our first models um, we built it kind of like traditional construction you know we sent the team to the to the chassis the framers went in they installed all the framing then we sent the electricians in then we sent the plumbers in um, but as we started to scale um, <clears throat> we had to think of a way to go faster right. and just like a car manufacturing plant if you think of how they do it they build their assemblies offline and then bring them online. So okay. this is kind of the first revision of that. Okay. Uh, you can see here we have all of our walls laid out in a sub-assembly manner. Um, we have the walls labeled for their stations. Here we call them companies. Okay. So you've got Wall Company B, Wall Company C, and so on all the way around. Um, they all have their wall labeled on their table, what they build. Okay. Um, and at that table, they have their set of blueprints for that wall. Um, they have a tack time sheet to keep track of their production status. Okay. And then they have their own way of storing their material um, so that we have a reserve here for them. Okay. So will this wall company build the same wall over and over and over again? Exactly, yeah. So okay. this wall company will build the same wall over, over and over again just to start gaining that yeah. momentum and speed. Yeah. Um, by now, they have become experts of that wall. Yeah, um, and that's that's the whole the whole reason for this exercise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like that. With the frame CAD machine, how long does it take to spit out the studs for an entire unit? So for an entire unit, we can do it in about three hours. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And that's that's not at full speed either. Wow. So we could we could get a little faster there. Huh. But definitely not an issue with speed on the frame CAD. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Apparently not. So we have our sub companies, and then material flows to our line companies. Here in the line companies, they have a set of tasks that they have to complete in one day so that we can accommodate our one a day theory um, that we're trying to reach. Um, so right now, the way our factory is set up is the units come in and out this way. So typically the way we would want to see it is it progressing slowly, right? right. But because some of our units leave early, um, they, they come in in separate uh, patterns. So you'll notice these are more completed than these, yeah. and then those are more completed. Right. Um, so our design here is that the lines move and not the units. Okay. Um, so that saves us a lot of time in production. So it'll, where it starts is where it finishes. Exactly. It goes out that way. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, got it. So yeah, we're, we're implementing a software called Offsite. Yeah. It is a quality control and production tracking software. Okay. And in that software, it's going to be linked to all of the foremans of those line companies. And from there, the management team in a live kind of dashboard will be able to see exactly where that line company is. Okay. Um, we're in the implementation process of that now. Right, right now, it's a manual process uh, with uh, Trello or, or a, a paper copy. Yeah. Um, but it will turn digital uh, here in the next uh, week or two. So then if one's a little slower, you just add more people to that company and they exactly. speed up so, kind of deal? <clears throat> so yeah, that once they we start using that software we'll be, we'll be able to track start and stop times yeah. of each individual task and if some are taking longer which they become the bottleneck then we'll do some leveling Got to it. help balance those lines out that's cool yeah so at first first we need to collect the data and then yeah. we can start making yeah. it making awesome. improvements one thing you'll notice is our you know full height windows yeah kind of opens up the space definitely fills it makes it feel a little bit bigger really like that what was the biggest log jam that you had starting out? Um, I would say that when we converted the factory from sub from traditional to sub assemblies, yeah. um, that was a big like mind shift change on how everyone is accustomed to building. Right. Um, <clears throat> we're still like in the works of that. It's still, you know, we're still refining and making things better, but uh, having the assemblies built offline and then bringing them online was a big challenge uh, figuring out the logistics of how we do that you know, how do we carry these he now heavy uh, uh, assemblies over to the line yeah. do we add drywall do we not add drywall um, there's a lot of a lot of tinkering there to get that figured out okay it's still we're still refining yeah, that now for sure and figuring out how we can sh shave time from the line okay um, <clears throat> the way I like to, to see it is 
here on the line is we don't have any time at all to spare. Yeah. At the sub assemblies we do. Right. So anything we can remove here and add here, yeah. it, it makes it makes us more efficient. Okay. All right, that's it for me here at Zenny Home. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Oh look, it's JR's place. Where's the next factory gonna be? It's gonna be on the site here, maybe a little bit more north. That way. I think there's still some planning there that they're okay. trying to sort.